Hello, and welcome to Soothing Bod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we journey through ancient Greece with Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, nature, the moon, and childbirth. We will learn of Artemis's upbringing and her life in adulthood. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the place that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Safely tucked away in your bed as you are now, there are no obligations, there is no to-do list. By simply listening to the sound of my voice, you are already giving your body rest and nourishment that it needs. Whatever else you are seeking will come soon after. With your eyes closed, feel as your body sinks deeper and deeper into the mattress beneath you. For a moment, let's explore the paths of our imagination You are lying in your bed with your cozy blankets and pillows. But you are no longer in your bedroom. Instead, you are deep within a safe, cozy forest. Your bed is nestled in the center of a small clearing. A clearing embraced by tall, beautiful trees. There are strong oaks and slender birch trees, whose white bark seems to glow in the light of the silvery full moon overhead. The leaves of these trees rustle above you, dancing in the breeze that laces its way through this stunning forest. And on that enchanted breeze, you can smell the invigorating aroma of the forest. The brisk smell of the evergreen pine needles and cedar leaves. The damp, soothing aroma of a moonlit dew on the soft grass that is gathering beneath your feet, the earthy smell of the loam and soil, providing sustenance to the nature around you, and coming in from the distance, you swear you can smell the snow on the mountain tops over the far horizon. You feel the coolness of this breeze on your skin as well. You curl the blankets a little tighter around yourself, allowing your body to feel cozy and warm for a night of fulfilling rest. With nature all around you, Your bed somehow feels more comfortable than it ever has before. The noises of the forest lull you closer and closer to sleep. The sound of that steady breeze going through the trees, rustling the leaves over and over again, You swear you can even tell the difference between the sounds the oak, birch, and 
and cedar leaves make as the wind dances its way through them. The sound of the swaying grass is so soft, it's barely audible. Its constant whooshing creates a perfect white noise background for this stunning soundscape. But the one sound you cannot ignore is the chirp of the crickets. Each and every chirp puts you more and more at ease. They are nestled in comfortable, hidden homes throughout this forest. You imagine a cricket nestled in the knot of the old oak tree that's towering over your head. It's cozy there singing its song out to the universe on this perfectly moonlit night. You imagine crickets hiding beneath blades of grass, singing underneath a canopy of daisies and wildflowers in the distant field. They are singing for themselves individually, but somehow, they are unified in their song. They are working together to craft the ideal soundtrack for a sleepy summer night. Every once in a while, you hear the hoot of an owl. It cuts through the brisk night air winding its way through the forest to reach the ears of another distant owl. It takes some time, but soon you hear another owl respond with its own hoot. From there, their conversation continues. You wonder for a moment what they are talking about on a night like this. Could it be about how full the moon is? How great the air feels as it runs through their sleek feathers? Whatever it is, the sound of their conversation brings you great comfort as your eyes grow heavier and heavier in your bed. The light of the moon washes over your body each time a small birch branch above you is swept out of the way by the wind. You swear you can feel the beams of moonlight as they brush over the top of your head, your torso, your arms and legs. And as they do, something rather remarkable happens within you. You focus on the moonlight as your head is bathed in it. And with that moonlight, you feel a great sense of relaxation come over all the muscles there. If your teeth are clenched, you unclench them, allowing your jaw to relax. If your tongue is tense, you feel it relax, landing in a more natural position. Your eyes stop tensing and being closed so tightly, and your shoulders come away from your ears giving you more room to breathe. You follow these rays of moonlight as they drift down to your torso. As they do, you feel your chest relax more and more. Your lungs seem to open up, 
allowing more of that nourishing night air in, and in turn, causing your breathing and heartbeat to slow to a more relaxed, healthy level. With each breath you take, you feel more and more tension melting away from your chest. Any heaviness that you have been carrying rolls away, disappearing into the soil below you. Then, the moonlight dances over your legs and arms. You feel your fists unclench and all the muscles in your body relax, falling heavier and heavier into the mattress now that they are free of weight that is not theirs to carry. Now that we have taken the time to unwind and find peace and comfort in the place that we are in, here and now, let us begin our story. Artemis, the goddess of wilderness, vegetation, and childbirth, came to this earth under rather strange circumstances. Long ago, Zeus, the god of thunder, laid eyes upon Leto, the goddess of motherhood. The moment Zeus saw her, he was utterly struck by her beauty and strength. For days, he could not bring himself to think of anything aside from the grace of her movements, her mesmerizing hair, the way he felt when her breathtaking gaze swept up to look at him. He was love-struck, and seeing no other way to solve this, he decided to pursue Leto. And Leto, too, had been struck by an overwhelming passion for the god. Looking upon him made her heart leap as it had never leaped before. She felt a strange wave of calm and excitement wash over her, a wave that she was happy to be completely submerged in. There was peace in the wave. She felt her future in the wave. It did not take long for Zeus and Leto to become completely entangled with one another. Escapes into the forest week after week only caused their love to grow. And soon, Leto discovered that she was pregnant. But there was a problem with Leto being pregnant. Zeus was still married to Hera, the queen of gods. Though Hera was regularly vengeful of any human or nymph lovers that Zeus took on, she almost never retaliated against any goddesses or titans. Things, however, were different with Leto. When Hera discovered that she was carrying her husband's children, she became enraged and heartbroken. In an attempt to prevent Leto from giving birth, she issued an order preventing everyone on earth to give Leto shelter in order for her to bear her children. Leto was forced to wander from land to land, desperate to give birth. But no one would allow her to stay. Finally, 
she stumbled upon the island of Delos, the barren floating island made by her sister, Asteria, so that Leto could give birth. Leto settled on the island, and with the help of a few goddesses and nymphs, she finally gave birth to her twins, whom she named Artemis and Apollo. Apollo was a proud and powerful god, practically from the moment he was born. He soon became a symbol of youth and beauty. His features were so divine, so stunning, that he was ethereal. He was the god of archery, the sun, music, and dance. Most of the Greek gods loved and admired him and he went on to have many romances with several powerful and divine beings. Artemis, however, approached life in a much more demure way. She was a beautiful goddess, much like her mother, and she knew from an early age that she would be pursued by gods and mortals alike when she came of age. But Artemis did not require nor desire the love of men. She found all the joy she needed in the peace of the forest. When she was just a teenager, Artemis made the long journey up to Olympus to visit her father, Zeus. Zeus was surprised to see his daughter, who so infrequently visited him. She told her father that she had made certain choices for her life, and she wanted him to acknowledge and respect them. Firstly, she wanted to remain a maiden forever, a virgin untouched by romantic love and the hands of another. She did not want to be held down by any relationship or person, nor did she want to be pursued by anyone. Zeus was puzzled by this request at first. Many of his children were fond of romance, some would say too fond of romance. They enjoyed the power they had as gods, and they enjoyed pursuing other powerful people in ancient Greece. But that was clearly not at all what Artemis was seeking. Still a bit unsure, Zeus agreed to Artemis' request, promising to aid her in making sure her wishes were respected. But that wasn't the only request that young Artemis had. She smiled at her father pleased by how well the conversation was going. She told her father that she would like a bow and arrows, a bow and arrows crafted by the mighty Cyclops. Zeus was once again surprised. Apollo was the god of archery, he could gift Artemis a bow and arrows at any time, but that is not what she wanted. She told Zeus that so many of the gods and goddesses viewed Apollo as all-powerful, and her as an afterthought. She wanted to prove to the world and to Olympus 
that she was just as strong and talented as her brother was, no matter what it took. Sensing how important this was to Artemis, and also well aware that this is not something he would be able to reject with ease, Zeus went to the Cyclops and procured a powerful bow and arrows from them. Artemis happily tucked them away in her quiver, a quiver that she had been using for over a decade by then. She truly was just as skilled as her brother, though few were able to recognize that. But Artemis had one final request for her father, and it was perhaps the most important. She asked Zeus if he could help her form a group of nymphs, nymphs who would travel through the woods, forests, and marshes with her, protecting any young girls or women that were in need of help. Zeus believed this to be a noble quest, though he was rather surprised by it. He agreed to help Artemis form a group of nymphs that she could travel with during her duty to protect young women. With that, Artemis was pleased. She offered her father her gratitude and then headed on her way, excited about the future and her destiny. Her soul was at peace, knowing that her life's purpose was waiting for her along her chosen path. And so it began. Artemis no longer resided in Olympus, nor on the island of Delos that she had been born on. She had gone on to wander through more miraculous places, wilder places that better matched her roving heart and free spirit. She disappeared into the forests and woodlands surrounding what she referred to as City of Men. And it was in these forests that Artemis began to live a life beyond her wildest dreams. A life that was so fulfilling, so overflowing with joy, promise, and hope that it seemed as though it had been ripped from the pages of a fairy tale book, albeit a non-traditional one. Artemis wanted to live a life full of all the things that ignited her with joy and delight. She wanted to spend each day refreshing her soul and embracing the purpose of her life in the nature that surrounded her. And it was in the woods that she could do just that. Some days, Artemis would awaken as the sun rose up over the mountains, encircling the beautiful forest that she was living in. The golden rays of the sun, rays that were brought down by her own brother, Apollo, would splash across her face, flooding her body with comforting warmth that always stirred her awake with a smile. In those early morning minutes, she would allow her eyes to flutter open slowly and take in the forest around her. And my, was there a lot of incredible things to take in. The forest around her was lush, 
with leaves that were as plush as pillows and as fragrant as the fields of wildflowers that were found just beneath them. The entire forest was a kaleidoscope of green, emerald and sage and moss and jade, a mix of fresh shades that danced and swirled against one another with every gust of wind that laced through the trees. The rays of golden sunlight always seemed to stream through them like they were swaths of paint drawn down from the sky. These beams of sunlight sparkled and shimmered, illuminating the plush forest floor and every plant and leaf that it had the pleasure of brushing over in those dewy drops of gold. It truly looked too stunning, too frozen in time to exist in this world. And yet, Artemis awakened to it each and every morning. She would stay there in bed for a long moment, looking out over the forest. Her gaze would often drift up to the treetops, where birds were shaking off the comfort of sleep and embracing the promise of a new day. Their fuzzy feathers glistened in the early morning light as they dipped and dove from tree to tree, shaking branches lightly and rattling leaves with every new path they effortlessly carved through the forest. It wasn't just the beauty of their movements that fueled Artemis's cup. It was the beauty of their song and the poetic simplicity of her life among them. Artemis loved music almost as much as she loved the hunt and almost as much as she loved providing safety and protection to the women in need. As soon as the birds began to sing their beautiful melody into the universe, Artemis was rising to her feet, eager to embrace the bright and wonderful day before her. She would walk to the riverside slinking through the shadows of the giant, ancient trees to do so. As a chaste goddess, a goddess of protection, Artemis often liked to travel without being seen. It was something she was very comfortable doing, something that gave her an extra layer of confidence that she was very happy to embrace. She was okay with being unseen in the world because she was a person who felt the world so deeply regardless. She would often arrive at the riverbed with a smile on her face. This early in the morning, it seemed as though even the fish themselves had yet to stir. She would remove the cloak that she often wore, delighted by the feeling of the fresh morning air brushing against her skin. And slowly, ever so slowly, she would descend into the water. With every step she took, the cool water would rise more and more over her body, 
welcoming her to this invigorating, refreshing world. The smoothness of the rocks beneath her feet was an ultimate comfort for her. She felt most at home in flowing rivers and streams like these, places far removed from the rest of the world where she could listen to the song of the birds in peace and let her thoughts wander around her like petals on a capricious breeze. It was not long before the nymphs would awaken. Artemis greeted them all with a bright smile, urging them to join her in the water as they did nearly every morning. Some of the nymphs joined, stepping into the cool water one after the other. But some of the nymphs remained out of the water, dangling only their toes or hands in the cool current. Then some of the nymphs would begin to play instruments. Some would strum their lyres sending a breathtaking melody echoing through this secluded part of the forest where they could simply be free. Embracing the music and the feeling of this kind of freedom, the girls often danced with one another. It was not a dance for anyone but themselves. They were not dancing to impress, nor to attract any attention. They were dancing to feel their souls grow within their bodies. They were dancing to express joy, to express the sheer, untethered love that they had for the universe. As their bodies moved, their joy only grew. It felt so freeing to be so connected to nature and so entangled with the music and the feelings of peace and happiness that it brewed inside of them. For quite some time, they would dance to the music. They'd smile and laugh with one another and sometimes they would dance in silence, their eyes closed as they truly felt the power of the music. Slowly, as the time passed, the nymphs playing the music would strum slower and slower. The music would gradually die down the harmonies and melodies instead, replaced by the wondrous and fulfilling sounds of the forest. The beautiful calls of the birds became louder, the babbling of the stream around them as it brushed against their skin became a drone that they were tuned into and aware of yet again. The sound of the leaves dancing in the wind was so clear that they felt as though they could name each leaf that was brushing against another. With that, the girls knew it was time to continue on with their day. Often, they would step out of the stream to dry off and would share breakfast and food with one another. They would sit along the edge of the river, not quite yet ready to leave it, and offer fruit to one another. They would pluck the ruby red seeds of a pomegranate out of its shell and eat them bite by bite, relishing the taste of the sweet and sharp juice as it ran over their tongues. 
Every slice of life was to be savored, appreciated, and breakfast was no different. Gradually, the day would often wear on, and Artemis would decide what it was she exactly felt like doing that day. She often floated from task to task, like she was being pushed by a gentle breeze, without too much urgency or stress involved. She knew that she was here to enjoy life and partake in the simple pleasures that it offered. At the same time, she knew she had a role to protect women, a role that she took rather seriously. And so, every day, she would put her fingers to her lips and let out a whistle that cut through the forest with ease. The nymphs would wait by her side, smiling and humming in unison as they waited patiently for what was to come next. They would hear the sounds of the hooves before they could see the creatures causing the noise. It was a distant rumble at first, so distant it was almost deniable that you had heard anything at all. But gradually, the noise would grow and grow until it sounded like a smooth and graceful herd of animals making their way through the forest. And indeed it was. While many of the Greek gods and goddesses had chariots pulled by noble steeds or fantastical creatures, Artemis had a chariot that was pulled by deer. Every time Artemis laid eyes on her deer, she was overcome by feelings of love and care. The deer were beautiful, fragile, graceful creatures. When they looked at her, their large, fuzzy ears would flap with delight, backlit and silhouetted by the light of steadily rising sun. Their tawny coats and white underbellies seemed to glow, without a single speck of dirt on them. Their black noses twitched as their dark brown eyes looked upon Artemis as a friend and a guide. And Truly, Artemis was, because every day she would climb atop her chariot, taking a few of the nymphs with her. With a gentle snap of her reins, the deer would take off, leading her and nymphs into the forest to explore and see if there was anyone in need of their help. Along the way, Artemis and the nymphs would admire nature, taking in the beauty of the landscape around them. They talked about the trees that grew taller and greener every day. They talked about the wildflowers which seemed to be expanding across the meadows more and more with every drop of nourishing sunshine and life-giving rain. But gradually, the conversation would slow, because almost every day, the women would start to sense something in the forest. Some days, they would come upon a young girl who had traveled 
too far from her hometown in search of firewood or food. It was an unforgiving forest. It was, indeed, true wilderness. When Artemis and the nymphs would find the girl, very often she would be terrified, sure that she was never going to get home again. But Artemis would greet the girl with a smile and welcome her onto the chariot, wrapping her arms around her as she steered to make her feel safe. Artemis would talk to the lost girl about the forest as the deer took them toward the girl's home. Their farewells at the edge of the village were always full of cheerfulness and eternal gratitude. Sometimes, Artemis would find a woman that was trying to escape men who were pursuing her, women who simply wanted to live their lives. And, much like the lost girls, Artemis would welcome these women onto her chariot and drive them to safety. Only, in these cases, Artemis shot her silver arrows through the forest, warding off the men that were pestering the poor woman. It was a job that took up much of her time, a job that involved a lot of rescuing, a lot of searching through the large forest, and a lot of heart-to-hearts. But at the end of the day, there was nothing Artemis would rather be doing. Every night, as Artemis laid her head down on her bed, she felt a wave of satisfaction wash over her. She had spent the day eating berries and fruits she foraged with her nymphs. She had bathed in a river and danced to the song of songbirds and lyres. She had traveled through the forest to help another woman find peace. And every night, as the moon began to rise up over the lush canopy of trees, it would wash Artemis in a silver cloak. And as it did so, Artemis would smile, because she knew that she was fulfilled. I hope you have enjoyed this story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please, Join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.